And welcome back. It's the uh, Rick and Ron show. It's not Bob and Doug, but it's the Rick and Ron's Christmas special. Hi, Ron. Yeah, hi, Rick. It's good to be with you again. <laughs> I know it's our socks match. Yeah, yeah. Orange going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess our feet don't necessarily need to be so physically distant. So uh, there we go. There yeah, look at that. Nice. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas to you too. Yeah. Yeah. We have a shout out. Uh, yeah. Frontline workers should be near the top of the list here. I just really appreciate all the good work that our frontline workers have been doing, whether it's um, hospital workers, whether it's our elected officials as they try to navigate this, this weird world as well, having to make hard decisions. As difficult as they are, we appreciate you and we're so thankful that you're there having to go through this. But really those people who have been uh, working uh, with those that have been ill, thank you so much for all your good work. And we all have them in our family. We do. And in our churches. You've seen it. You've experienced it personally yourself. Yeah. I know we have uh, with friends. And so, um, yeah, just, again, thank you for your good work. So, a uh, question for you. This this uh, Christmas special Rick and Ron episode. You got one for us? Oh, totally. totally. Here we go. So, I've been thinking about this for a little while. Um, and, and it comes to, to us from the world in which uh, we celebrate Christmas. So, when we think about our Christmas trees, yeah. real or fake? Oh. Do you guys have a real Christmas tree or a fake Christmas tree? We are a fake family. No. Yeah. It comes in say two, it isn't so. It comes in two pieces, and it takes thirty seconds to set up, and the lights are still on it every year. Really, you? Yeah. So for years, uh, for, for as long as Monique and I were married, we said real, real, real. We took our kids along to chop down uh, the trees. That's how real we were. It's like a movie. It really was. Uh, it got to the point it, where we said, oh, we can't keep doing this anymore. So we would go to those local places of Christmas tree sales and pick up our local Christmas tree. We realized, however, that it became really messy in the house and so on. Yeah. So about five years ago, Rick, we made the change to fake. And like you, we have a three-piecer uh, that has the lights on it. The lights started burning out, so we had to pull them all off and we had to replace with new lights, but we've still gone with the fake. Yeah, yeah. our neighbor has a fake one, and the only reason I know is because when he bought it, he didn't look at the size. It was 14 feet. Wow. Wow. <laughs> he wanted to give it to me. Well, I think it's just outside in his front yard now looking beautiful. So mm. needless to say. Hey, our story today is about a uh, tree. Okay. And it's actually uh, stolen right out of Bob Brown's book, Lord. Oh, yeah. It's been one of those days. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the title of the book. And it's about a pastor that goes to an elderly blind lady's mm. house and actually knocks on the door, gets invited in for a hot chocolate, and sees a Christmas tree in the corner. Mm. Knowing this lady's been blind for years, part of the church, uh, the pastor talks about life and all the circumstances of what's going on, but eventually gets to the question, as he can't help but notice that Christmas tree in the corner, it is also a very large one, very well decorated and lit up like nobody's business. Mm. She responds when finally the pastor asks and says, oh, for years we've been doing that. Well, she lives alone, so the pastor says, who? Well, my nephew goes and picks a tree mm. out and brings it in and we decorate it together and put the lovely lights on each and every year as part of our tradition. Mm. Oh, says the pastor, that's wonderful. And you've been doing this for years. Yes, she says, it's, it's awesome. Well, of course the pastor begins by uh, saying, I don't mean to be uh, intrusive or offensive, but, uh, but you're blind. Um, and so why, why do you have such a beautiful lit up Christmas tree? And every year she leans into the pastor and says, well, pastor, everybody's not blind. Wow. And it reminds us, uh, it's not necessarily part of the Christmas story, but it's part of Christ yeah, from Philippians 2, 4, that each of us should not only look to our own interests, but also to the interests of others, which is a big deal during the Christmas season, of course, and the big deal of who Christ is as he teaches us and disciples us and asks us to do the same to all the nations in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's a great story, Rick. Um... Quite often, as you were saying it, and I've heard this now twice as you've shared it, 
Um, but, but the things that, that struck me in this is well, what are some of the traditions that we have in our own families when it comes to celebrating Christmas? And the second part of my question and wondering is, is um, when we think about that and how we do those things, how, do we do it for our sake or do we do it for the sake of others? Right. As this, this woman uh, so beautifully, beautifully demonstrated in, the, in this story. Um, some of our traditions, uh, and, and maybe you're going to experience this for the first or second time, I'm not sure, but we have to share our children for Christmas. And so they're <laughs> married, they have uh, their in-laws, and, and so they quite often, obviously, have to go to their um, significant other's uh, parents for Christmas. Not everybody has to do that, but I mean, that's something we've done over the last number of years. And so trying to balance the Christmas calendar around that is something, a tradition that we've had to do for the last, uh, I would say 10 years, 11 years. And oh my goodness, it's it's delicate, it's, it's interesting, uh, but it is also a joy because we get to share our children with somebody else. Right. Uh, so that's become part of our tradition. Have okay. you guys got any? Yeah, uh, we, we have traditions. Actually, in our home, uh, it doesn't uh, revolve around the tree, but um, we have bought books, those hardcover uh, Christmas reading books for children that have wonderful pictures in them. And um, we have four children, and uh, they're now uh, from the age 26 uh, down to 20. But back when uh, we started having children, we would buy a Christmas book. Mm -hmm. And now we have a, a house full of them and they sit on the shelves. And of course, uh, there's a favorite that mm -hmm. um, the kids have all come to love out of all the, the books that are uh, decorating our house. But it's a wonderful uh, conversation piece. We uh, brought all the books to uh, uh, a church service a couple of times and different Christmas Eve celebrations that we do. Mm. But uh, for the most part, when people come to our home and see these over the years, then they always kind of look and they get to hold them and page through them. And uh, the favorite of our kids, which they could recite by memory, is uh, Piper the Mouse. And it's about uh, a mouse in the church. Yeah. And he witnesses the Christmas play. But yeah, that's our one of our traditions, along mm -hmm. with the tree. But the tree has uh, a significant meaning because you start talking about sharing your children. And this gets into the old family tree. Yeah. and uh, the Christmas tree. And we're doing this on purpose, saying that the tree would be the theme. But we also know that uh, our, our families are a big part of Christmas. And yeah, we love to boast about them and talk about them, but that's neat to hear how you just put that in words of sharing your, your family. Yeah, and, and it, it's not always been easy, right? Because um, you are balancing schedules of people that you have no control over, right? Yeah. And so trying to make sure that uh, the, the celebration is not hindered by the tension of trying to make it all fit, right? And so then we, become to, we come to a place of, okay, this year we do it this way, this year we do it that way, and we've, we've started to find that rhythm. Right. What I find also interesting in this, when you think about family trees, is that every family continues to carry on traditions from a previous past. And so, for example, uh, for years, my mom would uh, purchase chocolate letters oh, yeah, for right. everyone, right? And so it, it became this, this new normal that carries on for our children <laughs> as they see it. They're oh, we going to get our chocolate letters this year. Yeah. What, what kind do you like, the dark chocolate or the milk chocolate, right? Yeah. That becomes part of it. But there's one that's really fascinating for us that we're starting to carry on through to our grandchildren. And so it was something that my mom began early on when my, Monique and I were first married, was she would place an ornament on the tree. And the kids got to pick an ornament to take from the tree yeah. at the end of every year that they would claim as their own and they could use for their Christmas as they got older. Well, they would take it. Yes, they would take it. So it was purchased. And so we started doing things like that as well. Huh. Now with our grandchildren, we're also creating and buying these, these ornaments, putting them on the trees and saying, these are for you. And so it's carried on through now three, going into three generations. Right. Oh, we also do the ornaments, but we just do them for them. But that's a good idea. I know we're a little behind you. We don't have uh, grandchildren. Uh, but I do know that uh, families are important and to pass those traditions mm -hmm. on or at least creatively help them think about 
what traditions they could do. I might have to spill that one. Oh, over. that's totally fine. And that, that's what we hope for is, is maybe there's ideas that you'll carry with you and take away from this. The, the last tradition that, that um, maybe is more of a community-based tradition based on our congregation too is, is uh, Christmas songs oh, yeah. and, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so in our congregations and maybe in yours as well, it, it, it really depends, but our, our Dutch heritage really plays out and, and the Christmas song Ira Sai Hout is something that, that we sing. Not everybody likes that hymn, but we do. Right. And we love carrying it through. Um, which leads to my last tradition that we do. Uh, and this one <laughs> may not necessarily be connected to, to church stuff, but, but favorite movie oh, yeah. that we watch during Christmas, right? Yeah. And, and for us, uh, please don't judge me in this in any way, Rick. Oh. Uh, <laughs> National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Oh. Right? So that one is a classic for us that we, that we watch. Okay. And, and it's so funny, so unorthodox, but, but it certainly shows the beauty of, of how we can come together even though we are kind of a dysfunctional group. <laughs> it's really cool. All right. Uh, we're not judging? No, no judgment. Christmas with the cranks. Oh, yes. <laughs> hey, and going back to Ara Sahad, yeah. there's a wonderful person that became a Christian and entered into uh, the church that heard this song once sang in its native Dutch tongue and was wondering what the heck is going on. And he thought the words were, her hair is so hot. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of uh, songs, we did a Rick and Ron special a while back on yep. the top five hits of the hymns in yep. all times, yep. all time. And uh, actually, one was Christmas. It was. Silent Night, it was. Uh, a German hymn. And uh, yeah, I think uh, the Christmas tree, isn't that uh, got roots in Germany too? I, I think so. Sure. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Have Which bring? Hmm? have to do a little bit of digging on that one. Yeah. Uh, ah! Nice. Yeah. Unless it's a fake. Of course. Tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the uh, family tree goes to uh, the roots of Christ, and uh, let's finish up with that because sure. there's something about Jesse's tree, as people seem to know it, right? Yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. What's really beautiful is, uh, and sometimes we we just kind of bypass it, but the genealogy of Jesus right shows up for us at the beginning of Matthew. Right, and it's all these names and these different connections. But if you take a look at it, it's kind of broken up into the three kind of sections, right? Um, You know, Adam to uh, then it begins with with David and then begins with kind of the the prophets and then gets to Jesus. Um, I I find that really fascinating. And as we read through them and the the significant threads of that family tree, uh, some of the names that show up in there, I, I find fascinating. Along with the four women. Right. Yeah, that uh, has been highlighted to me several times. Yeah. Some pastors preach on that as yeah. a series. And, yeah. yeah, very intriguing. And sometimes the uh, the historical value of that boring piece of, uh, of, of literature in the Bible tells us uh, a lot about our comfort because of how uh, God in his plan has redeemed. And a lot of those characters, you know, like we know, as we read them, some of them not so familiar, but the David and the Rahabs are, are very much a feel-good story of how God worked uh, them into his plan for salvation. And uh, that is good news. Absolutely. And, and as you said, some who even felt like they were on the outside were part of the narrative, mm-hmm. such as Ruth. Mm-hmm. Right? And it's, it's beautiful. And it reminds me of this one last thing that we'll just kind of share with you is... Um, last year, uh, serve. We had a focus on uh, forever one, right. and again, touching on that same theme that God is faithful through the generations, pointing to uh, a resurrected uh, Jesus Christ, which again gives us the most beautiful story of it. Yeah. yeah, that does it for our Christmas special. Uh, I'm Rick, and I'm Ron, and have a merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.